Okay, take it away from the top. Our student life presentation is on parking at Elon University. I'm Ari. I'm Marjorie. I'm Riley. And I'm Evan. So first we have a real life example of one of our teammates going through the issues that we'll be addressing. Like a lot of people have probably seen them in Daniel Center, like when you're leaving the airport near the gates that 
uh, move up and down. And then lastly, to create a new app called Phoenix Park, which uh, we'll later talk about. So the first one that we um, came up with was a signing parking lot. And as you can see, this is an actual map that Elon has created, but we um, took out some things um, and then also circled all the lots. There's seven lots. Um, right here, there's two. Um, those are both McMichael, the front lot, and then behind McMichael. So all seven lots will be mainly used by students, and each of these lots will have an actual um, boom barrier before students enter it. And so again, just um, to go over this again, there's going to be five lots, um, but two uh, are McMichael. Um, for just students, um, and then these are the lots that will stay the same for staff and um, faculty. So this really will help with security um, going around campus because you'll know who is where um, at all hours and um, really just make it easier for students to know where they actually can park because I know like it's very confusing to know where you can park because they have all of the like, FF for faculty or like OK for OAK and it's just super confusing for anyone visiting campus or um, anyone who really doesn't know where they're supposed to park. And second, um, the boom barrier gates. So this is what it looks like. We're going to have seven gates. Um, each gate uh, will go in front of the parking lot, like I mentioned, and students will tap their Phoenix card um, on a near field reader. And so this will allow the gate to open. And um, it will really just, again, help uh, security to know who is where and to not have them go into the parking lots and see, oh, they're not supposed to be here, I'm ticketing them, I'm telling them, et cetera. And this is the near field connection reader. So this is what you see in front of every building on Elon campus. And each of them is $100, so we need seven of them, totaling in $700. And those will be placed before you enter it. So our third one is the Phoenix Park app. <coughs> Um, this app, working with the <coughs> barrier and the near-field connection reader, will, like Riley said, increase safety. Um, when a student or faculty taps their Phoenix card on the near-field connection reader, um, it will alert campus security as to who's in what lot at what time. Um, the app also, uh, once you open the app, you select which lot you plan on going to. It will tell you the spots available and where the lot is located. Um, there will be two different programs depending whether you're faculty or staff. Uh, it will definitely um, decrease confusion. A lot of people, like Riley said, don't know where they're supposed to be parking. Um, if you're faculty, it'll show you exactly where you're supposed to be parking. And same with students, it'll show you the exact lot that you're allowed to be in. So the app's going to cost $40 a month for Elon University. Um, you have a one-time charge of $1.99 to buy the app for both students and faculty. And it's available on iOS, Android, Microsoft, Amazon, and Blackberry. Um, the total estimated cost for both Elon University and students for the boom barrier gates and the near field connection readers will total $3,612.07, along with the charge of $40 a month for the app. Um, for students, each year you have to buy your parking pass for $190 and uh, like I said, the one time fee of $199, so your first year will be $191.99. Uh, so funding for these, uh, we are increasing your parking pass to $190. So with 6,100 undergraduate students at Elon, around 30% 30, 30 registered to have a car. So the revenue equals $463,600, which is an increase of about $50,000 from the year prior. And with the app uh, being $199, um, you, we have a revenue of about $5,000 with faculty and staff for purchasing them. Okay, so essentially I'm just going to summarize what our step-by-step -step process is. We have a time frame on here from like where we begin and when it will finish. <coughs> so obviously our first step is to basically seek approval from our <coughs> audience, which is with Devin Frank and Tom Tan. Uh, we'd expect to do this by January 1st of 2019. Um, then we'd um, contact the Boom Barrier and Gate System and obviously see what the what time frame is for that to 
like come back to us, so that'll be by February 31st, 2019. Um, they're actually installing the boom barrier gates and the readers. Um, we're looking to start that by May 31st and potentially finish by August 1st. And then we get into the process of creating the Phoenix Park now. Um, so if you want to finish this whole process right before fall 2019, so we'll also just come back on campus around the end of August so that this whole parking system is finished. Um, so thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, see you next. How will it work for Vinder? So Vinder, the admissions lot is still like for them, and then also online. You know, like I know if you've seen like at some schools, they have like principal like um, tags or something like that. You know, when you like put them on your car, so those would work with the readers too. Um, so you know, they could go anywhere, but it's more just for the admissions lot that stays. Also, if um, Yale University knows that visitors are coming, um, you uh, safety and like campus security can't open the boom barriers and keep them open. So they can say like McMichael Lot A is like where you're allowed to park, and the boom barrier will be open at like during those times when visitors are coming. Okay, I just want to like feel like my sister comes to visit me or something. Um, I would have to go like meet her at a gate to give her that pass in order for her to get in. Well, it's like a it's like an online thing. So if she comes and like you can print it from online, so she can print it wherever she is and bring it with her, and then she can get in wherever she wants. Yeah. yeah um, so like all these new boom barriers and like swipe cards and stuff. If any of those break, uh, do you plan on like do we have to hire like another maintenance guy or like a lunch factor in the cost or anything like that? Uh, we probably hope that uh, once we contact in the people with the boom areas, um, if they did, like, obviously the science installation, but they educate how to, like, um, obviously Tom Plan, who is, like, director of, like, um, all maintenance and stuff. But we're, we're having it on campus, like, they've been educated and, like, you know, controlling it. And we already have one on campus anyway. I mean, we have one at Downey, so I'm pretty sure that they, you know, know how to fix it. And if we're looking to work, just open it and then obviously fix it as possible. We do have excess revenue from the parking passes, like increasing them. We have uh, a, a lot of excess revenue. So if it if it was enough damage that we would have to hire like a third party to come in and help us, uh, we would have that money readily available. What is the uh, parking permit now for students? How much does that cost? Um, one seven seventy. So that's the twenty dollars that yeah. you yes. And then the second question I have related to um, maintenance is. Um, did you guys investigate costs for installing cameras in case there's damage if somebody's just having some fun ramming the gate to, to cause vandalism to be able to look into that? Those things considered? We didn't look up cameras, no, but I mean, that is a good point. That's something we could definitely look at. Um, I know that's true, like, people try to get around the system and everything on campus, especially <laughs> something that does confusing and frustrating and parking. Um, so I feel like that is Other questions? Do you need a card to get out or just to get in? Just get in. No other questions? Great, thank you. Thank you.
Whatever. Yes. Uh, I feel like the flow of ideas is really good, like leading up to like specific next steps that they're going to take. So like I was like informing like every step and how they're going to get there and like what they're going to do after. So I felt like I knew what they were talking about. Okay. I know. Uh, what other things did they do well? I uh, did a good plan of action. I thought it really like, brought everything we were talking about together and going in. Okay. <coughs> what else? Uh, they were very passionate about the project, which I thought was good. And how did that pass you come through? Um, like it made them more credible, I think. Mm -hmm. Makes you more credible. Did it come through in the way that they talk, their facial expressions? Wait, you didn't you didn't get a sense that they're four out of their minds doing that, right? That they really want to be where they were and they're pretending about something they care about. Um, anything they could have changed? Improved on. Did anyone raise a hand and I can see it in my back? Some, um, some of the flags, no color. The one with the parking permits is black and white. <coughs> yeah. So you already have your, your colors here, your themes, you're using black, you're using red and yellow. Spice it up, the same thing with your, your any question slide. Why don't we have any color on there? <coughs> so I also made some other edits, uh, or edits, uh, notes for you on your slide presentation. But if you've gotten feedback today, make those edits before you submit your presentation so that you're in um, a better shape to get as many of those 40 points as you can with that. So um, I appreciate your work in class today. If you uh, did not present, you are free to get back a little bit of your life. Go have an early lunch or a nap or a <coughs> And uh, if you did present today, hold on until I get back and get your scan feedback um, so you can have that. Phone.